everybody, welcome back to the lab. That's lab. Uh, today, Makita, some sort of a, no, I don't just have giant hands. This is a very tiny leaf blower type of uh, device. And the client states that turned it off, went away, came back around the corner, it was on, couldn't shut it off, and it was smoking. And now, with a fully charged battery, dead. So, we're going to uh, either fix it or toss it. I'm not sure. Okay. So, we're going to dive in, see what's going on. Uh, 18 volt DC product. Nothing going on in there. Alright, so let's take a look see what's going on okay so um, what I'm noticing is this can go on here or onto here so it can suck and blow not at the same time I guess it's always sucking in there but you can I, I don't know what you would be doing maybe exhausting fumes of some sort but if I look at it you can tell that something has gone through it um, drywall perhaps Kokanga maybe I don't know uh, but that spins freely so whatever's going on there that's not the issue more screwing Okay, let's see. There's anything hidden in here. Okay, so that's that's dusty. Where'd it go? Okay, a spring just popped out of there. That's for some sort of a uh, control. I gotta find that spring. I'll be back. I'll see you next spring. Okay, so I found it. It looks like this, and it's kind of like a retaining detent, and it went in over here. Let turn on it's a bit more light. Click. <clears throat> Okay, and when it was kind of bent off to the side like that. So that is, I believe, your speed control. Oh, yeah, it looks like just three, three speeds. It's not something that spins continuously. It's got three and that's a little detent. Kind of like, a, you know, retaining circuit so look at keep that in mind and that feeds in oh that just limits how far you can pull the trigger in so this is probably some variable variable type of thing battery connections look pretty good plus minus nothing's jumping out at me what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some hair and blow this out just so I can get a better look at it. Okay, that was a bit of stuff. Um, so somebody was sucking something up with it. Okay, like, I mean, just for the hell of it.
Oh, okay, they're like that. Yeah, so nothing. Nothing's getting hot, nothing's getting warm. Pull that out. I'm sure that's a fully charged battery. I believe the client when they said that. Okay, i not seeing anything that looks like a fuse right off the bat. It's always fun to uh, jam all this stuff back in. I got some heat shrink there. Maybe a fuse under there could very well be. Huh. That's weird. There's something in there. Two reds and two blacks going in. Oh! Ew. <laughs> okay. Meltage. This is melted. I'll show you that. That side of the switcheroonie is a melted. And there's a bit of uh, melting schmoo over here on this side too. So wow. What well what would cause that? Heat? What would cause the heat? An increase in temperature due to kinetic energy of the molecules associated with it? So that's definitely a problem. Borderline the problem. So, okay, look at that red wire is uh, melted. So what came first? Did the wires get hot and it melted this or did this get hot and melt the wires? Uh, now I've seen these type of switches on other devices which is kind of, it's got like a rheostat, uh, you know, uh, not quite a pod, variable speed pod, unless it is, and that's what got it so hot. And yeah, we got, oh, what the heck is this here? Some sort of a uh, three wires. Is that a temperature switch? I mean, I'm thinking some sort of a uh, SCR or triac of some sort of thing. Looks like it plugs in. But it doesn't unplug. Yep, it unplugs. Or does it? No. That's just to keep them separated. <laughs> Look at that. Neat. Like a three sided triangle type thing. They're rare. Well, I'm not sure exactly what that's doing. Let's see if it's any, uh, there's any shorts there. Uh, That's the center. Well, nothing shorted out. Is there a number on it? Ooh, barely. Okay, I gotta get the other eyeballs out. Hang on. Yeah, let's just take a look here with my. Uh, I got my special glasses on here, and that is a. Um, P75 and F75. P75. If I recall, that's uh, like a MOSFET. Uh, <clears throat> that's a, my memory tells me that's a MOSFET. And um, yeah, so well, don't short, don't touch the leads. Static is our enemy. Okay, yeah. What do we do? Wow, where do we go with this? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not even sure how these circuits. I'm pretty sure red and black are for the motor. And that must be just there for a heat sink? B2 
because it, it can be cooled by the rotor, the fan. I'm guessing with a heat sink, that's why it's mounted way over there. And uh, so we got some sort of, uh, you know, it's probably like cutting up the, the sine wave or, well, it's on a sine. Excuse me. <laughs> Is that going to come apart? Well, it might have at one point in time. Still might. Uh, okay, I'm going to work on this off camera so I don't cut myself. Okay, I got it to a point where something's about to happen here. So I bent this tab back. That's off. Then I started pulling this out. And then this shot out. Oop. Okay, so that's out there. I see a bit more melting in here. So that, whatever that is. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a, like a potentiometer. The trigger is actually like a potentiometer. It's probably just changing the firing angle or something. Doggy. Okay, so there's the wiper. I'm not, uh, okay, and oh, there's a circuit board in there. Hmm. A little circuit board in there. Let's see some of that. And this trigger would wipe back across there in some sort of fashion. And there, on, on this side is common, but on this side there's a whole bunch of different sluts, so I think it's accessing different parts of the circuitry, like different voltage levels. And uh, it's kind of hard to explain, but this is all solid. But this has like uh, zebra stripes on it. So I think when you make a connection between the first one, second, third, fourth, it probably has like, I don't know, 10 steps, 10 levels of uh, connectivity, connectivity to drive uh, different parts of the circuit, which drive different parts of the MOSFET and give you more area under the curve or less area under the curve to change the speed. <laughs> oh, mistake. Okay, so... I'm almost inclined to think that something got in here and jammed it. And obviously not this white powder. A stick, a leaf, a uh, finger. Could you get a finger? No, pretty hard to get a finger. Some sort of digit. And uh, seized that. Current went up. Uh, burnt up that contact. Maybe it got wet or something like that. That's That's my my guess. Uh, I guess I could hunt down, see what another switch is worth, and then try to uh, figure out how to wire it in there. I'll have to use the video as a reference. These, yeah, these are just falling off. These are just falling off. I'll see how many parts I can use. That's, yeah, you'd have to buy that as a, as an assembly, as a unit. Okay, I'm going to get set up and see if I can test the motor just to make sure the motor still runs. Okay, the first thing I want to do is uh, just see if we get any ohms on these uh, black and red here. I know, I know. I'm in, I'm in parallel with the circuit, but uh, if you know anything about that. 1.7 ohms. That's pretty low, but it's not zero, and it's not infinity. So... There's a good chance my leads are 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. So we got a bit of homage in a small motor like that. Uh, three leads on this battery. There's a, probably a temperature cutoff or something. Plus, plus and minus. Not that polarity matters. Well, okay, do it right the way, the right way, and. Uh, 
because it'll just bend backwards, right? If get the polarity wrong. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it works. Uh, no need to check the polarity, see if it goes back the way. And that proves the battery was good, too. So, all right, so not a motor issue. That spins pretty freely. Uh, I'd like to see it spin a little bit more better than that. Um, don't feel like the bearings are locked up. Probably, not easily going to change any brushes. That's, that's probably a brushless motor. 18 volts, yeah. Okay. My conclusion is locked rotor, overcurrent in the uh, control circuit, melting the wires, and then some sort of a short, uh, must or sorry, probably went open because uh, it probably shorted and then went open, and uh, that's the end of that. So I don't know if I can get a replacement switch. I'll look into that, but that'd be a whole other video. Thanks for coming. Hopefully you learned something. You had some fun along the way. Be safe. Don't get any on you. See you next time.